Hey guys, it's Ornlu, and I've recently been wanting to get back more into uh, fun trivia and stats and multiplayer guides recently, so I thought I'd kick that whole phase of my YouTubing off with a concept that I did over oh, actually almost four years ago now, and that is what makes each civilization's t uh, tech tree unique in AoE 2. Obviously, most civilizations share a majority of their tech tree, but there is at least something that makes each civilization different than the other 44 civilizations in the game. Back then, there were only 35 civs instead of 45, and there have been tons and tons of balance changes and stuff like that since then, so I thought it'd be fun to sort of revisit that concept again. And so let's just run through this list. Um, this is by no means an exhaustive list. I mean, there are things that make each Civ unique that is not super interesting, like, oh, Huns are the only Civ that can't build houses. Well, like, yeah, duh. So I'm trying to uh, pick out stuff that is fun or interesting. Um, but yeah, feel free to let me know in the comments what your guys' favorite little bit of uh, Civ idiosyncrasy is. So with that in mind, let's get into Armenians here. Now, Armenians have a few different things you could do. Uh, you could say they have the worst siege in the game. It's kind of arguable with uh, Huns. But yeah, you do have no Siege Ram, no Siege Onager, no Bombard Cannon, and no Siege Engineer. So that really is a contention for the single worst uh, Siege Tech Tree. It's the same Tech Tree as Magyars, but Magyars at least get Siege Engineers. Uh, they also have the most sort of unique slash pseudo unique things in the game with two unique units and two unique buildings. If you count the Mule Cart and Fortified Church as unique, which you may or may not. So that's another aspect you can uh, look at as far as the Armenians go. They also have the most stuff that is available in Age Earlier with Spearmen, Longswordsmen, Pikemen, Halberdiers, Two-Handed Swordsmen, and Champion all available in Age Earlier. So whichever one you want, pick which one you find the most exciting. Aztecs. This has always been the case with this Civ. Aztecs do not have any building HP upgrades and are the only Civ in the game to not have masonry architecture or hoardings or any sort of compens compensatory uh, HP bonus like Byzantines. So yeah, that is uh, Aztecs always with the, pa the papier-mâché buildings, really leans into their more offensive uh, playstyle. Bengalis, uh, kind of a weird one, but they're the only Civ that gets uh, Gambesons, but no plate mail armor. Now, they got Gambesons not that long ago uh, in a patch, but yeah, you get that kind of weird distinction where you have champions that are fully upgraded, except for the last armor upgrade, which is obviously pretty darn important. Also, you can get the second most uh, units in a game legitimately without conversions or stuff like that with 222 villagers. Berbers have kind of a new one with actually the most recent patch. They are the only Civ that have a 100% complete dock tech tree plus siege engineers. Obviously, cannon galleons replacing Drummonds. Uh, that's kind of a no-brainer. But yeah, they have everything at the dock and siege engineers, which is not a, a combination that we have. We have... Uh, Spanish, we have Byzantines, and we have Dravidians, all with their own complete dock tech trees, but none of them have siege engineers, uh, which does benefit the cannon galleons and, I guess, demo ships now. So that is definitely something that Berbers have that is unique. Also, their ships move faster. Bohemians, this has always been kind of a weird one. They're the only non-American, non-Indian Civ to miss cav archers completely. No cav archers whatsoever. Uh, don't know why this is the case, maybe just to reinforce their more slow-paced playstyle. But yeah, every other Civ in the game that isn't American or, you know, an Elephant Archer Civ does have at least the Castle Age Cav Archer, but uh, not for Bohemians. In addition to the obvious uh, non longest range, non-siege, non-ship unit for Britons, um, you also have Warwolf, which gives the highest theoretical damage of any unit in the game, which is, you know, you're dealing with the 200 damage of a trebuchet across... Uh, a small blast radius, but if you can cram as many like Karambit Warriors into that small blast radius as possible, that's going to do more damage than anything else in the game, even like a demo ship hit. Uh, you just stack all the, the 200 attack over and over and over again. Uh, but beyond that, there really isn't anything that's too exciting with Britain, so that's, a, that's about as good as I've got. Bulgarians, they get the fastest attacking land unit. Their knights and cavalier with stirrups have a reload time of 1.35, which is uh, very fast. Faster than samurai, faster than mangudai, faster than Ethiopian arbs or Dravidian elephant archers. Very, very fast attacking. Burgundians, they have the most expensive non-spies tech in the game with Flemish Revolution, which costs upwards of 3,350 resources, I believe, if with full 200 villagers, which is 
more expensive than Siege Onagers, more expensive than Paladin, by a pretty sizable margin. Burmese have kind of an obvious one, but it is true that they are the only Civ in the game to miss Leather Archer armor. All 44 other civilizations in the game have it, and it is famously what has made Burmese kind of a tricky Civ to play uh, since their inception, just kind of struggling in the mid-game uh, to like early Imperial Age against strong Archer Civs. You kind of want a bunch of Arambai or Elephants or something to deal with those. And uh, yeah, those can be kind of tricky to mass up. Byzantines have a bunch that you could use. You have the fastest attacking unit in the game with the Byzantine fire ship line. You have the most HP on a building with their castles and Imperial Age with hoardings. They also have the broadest tech tree of any Civ, arguably, depends on how you want to count certain techs as missing. Uh, so yeah, lots of stuff there for Byzantines. Celts, they used to have the fewest Imperial Age uh, blacksmith techs at only two. Every other Civ had at least three, uh, but then they got Ring Archer armor for some reason. Uh, so now that is not unique for them anymore. So the closest thing I could get, other than their, you know, weird paladin combination of having paladin but no bloodlines or last armor upgrade... Uh, is they have the most speed-boosting bonuses of any Civ. You have faster-moving infantry, faster-working lumberjacks, faster-firing siege weapons, faster-firing buildings with stronghold, and faster-working siege workshops. So that's a lot of faster. Uh, and no other Civ has as many, you know, production speed, army speed, reload time speed increase. So Celts, obviously watching Fast and Furious a few too many times. Chinese, there really isn't much that I could find, other than, obviously, they have the most unique start of any Civ in the game, and, you know, your first one to minute. Town centers have extra pop space, extra line of sight. You have the whole three villager thing going for you, uh, with starting with fewer resources. Uh, yeah, if there's anything that you guys can find that is unique or interesting with the Chinese, definitely let me know, because uh, that's all I got. Humans have a few that you could uh, go for. You have the fastest moving land unit in the game, which is the Scout Cavalry in Imperial Age with this Civ. You get the 5% faster movement speed over what uh, other Civs would get with Husbandry. And uh, as long as you don't upgrade it to Light Cav, you'll have that base 1.55 movement speed as opposed to 1.5 of Light Cav and Hussars. You are also the only Civ that have camels, but no heavy camels. So yeah, you couldn't get the camels in Castle Age, but not the heavy camels in Imp. And they are also the only... Um, non-American Civ to miss a siege ship completely, as in you don't have uh, cannon galleons or drummonds. Now that uh, Huns have the drummond, it is just uh, Cubans and the American Civs who don't have a siege ship whatsoever. Dravidians, uh, to the surprise of, I'm sure, nobody, have the uh, fewest units and techs available at a stable, with only three little uh, non-Xs here. You just get like have and Battle Elephants. Yes, you do get Woot Steel. But uh, obviously, the Dravidian stable is uh, kind of a meme, and with good reason. Ethiopians have a couple of notable ones. They have the fastest training unit in the game with the Shotel Warrior. Uh, bonus points if you have seven Berber allies, because <laughs> Kazba actually stacks. So yeah, Shotel Warriors train the fastest of any unit in the game. They're also the only Civ with a complete Siege Workshop tech tree, and also have Siege Engineers. Obviously, you know, we're not counting... Oh, no, Lou, they technically don't get armored elephants. Uh, they don't have a complete siege tech tree. Yeah, 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 I know you guys in the comments. So yeah, of course, Ethiopian siege, always a uh, highlight with the Civ. Franks, there really isn't much here, obviously a very straightforward Civ, but they actually have the worst uh, stable of all cavalry Civs, and the worst scout line, at least stats-wise, of every single Civ in the game that, you know, by the tech tree has a cavalry label, a cav archer label, a camel label, or an elephant label. So anything that the game, you know, technically classifies as, you know, it would be good with stable or mounted units. Uh, yeah, Franks have the worst scout line. Um, Burgundians are pretty close. You could argue that Franks have light cav that train faster is better than Burgundian Hussar, but I, I think that's not quite true. <laughs> Georgians, I'm not really too sure about. Um, they don't have a ton going for them. They should have some of the highest theoretical damage of any building with a fully garrisoned uh, Svan Tower keep, but I don't know if that's technically the case. I, I don't know if there are situations where four cannonball uh, two-ton bombard towers of the Chinese ally still do more damage than like as many units as you can clump up, but that might be one. Also, they have the most efficient late-game economy. Uh, with the fortified churches, so you actually have a better late-game eco than literally every other sim in the game, so long as you have everybody within the fortified church radius, which is obviously not necessarily the case. Uh, beyond that, if you can think of uh, something else that makes Georgians unique as far as the tech tree and bonuses go, definitely let me know in the comments. Goths, it's a pretty obvious one, but you have the most bonuses to a single type of unit of any sort of sieve. You have, what, you have two bonuses, two sieve bonuses, an infantry unique unit, 
two infantry-related unique techs, and an infantry-related team bonus. No other Civ has as many bonuses stacked up for one unit category as the Goths do. I think the Turks are the second closest with uh, having four bonuses for their gunpowder. But yeah, obviously Goths, they do infantry. Gujaras, this one's kind of funny. They actually have zero fully upgraded units. No Civ in the entire Gujara tech tree gets all the available upgrades that, you know, you would be able to get with uh, the Civ. Obviously, you have holes here at the archer range. You missed the last armor upgrade. Your infantry is a joke. Your cavalry units, although incredibly good, don't have blast furnace. Your siege units don't have siege engineers. And also, you're missing, you know, siege onager and whatnot. None of your ships are fully upgraded. You don't have dry dock. Chakrams don't get blast furnace or squires. Monks don't get block printing. And I, I guess technically, they're trade carts. You get caravan, like every Civ in the game. Congrats. <laughs> Hindustanis. This one's kind of odd, but they're the only Civ to have a completely generic uh, regional unit. So if you look at Step Lancers, Battle Elephants, and Eagle Warriors, every Civ that has those units has a bonus for it. All the Step Lancer Civs have a Step Lancer bonus. All the Battle Elephant Civs have a Battle Elephant bonus. All the Eagle Civs have an Eagle bonus. And all of the uh, Elephant Archer Civs have an Elephant Archer bonus. Yeah, all the Siege Elephant Civs, except for Hindustanis, have a Siege Elephant bonus. <laughs> Uh, the only exception might be if you count Drummonds as a regional unit, in which case uh, Huns and Goths don't get any bonuses for their Drummonds. Uh, but they don't get full upgrades, so I guess Hindustanis can say they have the only fully upgraded generic regional unit. Huns, this is another pretty obvious one. They are the only Civ that... or I guess they are the Civ that have the least complete tech tree of any Civ in the game. They have more X's in their tech tree than any other Civ. Of course, Huns famously have a very lean tech tree. You have the units you need to win a game most of the time. Uh, but in terms of just raw stuff missing in their tech tree, uh, they win. They have the most. Incas are the only Civ that have champions, halbs, and eagles all available to them. Uh, obviously, Mayans don't have champions. Aztecs don't have halbs. They used to be the only Civ with a complete barracks, but then they lost supplies and gambesons because they had their uh, food discount apply to, obviously, all of their barracks units. So they can't. we can't say they have a full barracks tech tree anymore, but they still are the only Civ that have these three units. Italians, this is a pretty well-known one, but they have the most discounts of any civilization. All four of your Civ bonuses are a discount, as well as your Imperial Age Unique Tech Silk Road. So that's five different unique discounts that the Civ has. So yeah, you know, you want to go shopping with the Italians. Japanese have the highest DPS single target unit, which is, of course, their Katapuruto Trebs with Siege Engineers attacking buildings. That, I guess, unless you count, like, uh, petards and, and stuff like that. But, you know, stuff that doesn't die <laughs> when it uh, attacks, you know, over time... A Kataparuto trebuchet with Siege Engineers will destroy, um, you know, do more damage, I guess, than uh, anything else over an extended period of time against a single target. Khmer have a couple. Uh, they are the only Civ that have Cav Archers that are fully upgraded except for Thumb Ring. Obviously a very important upgrade for Cav Archers, but yeah, they have literally every other Cav Archer tech. They've got Parthian Tactics, they've got all the armor upgrades, they've got Bloodlines and Husbandry, Heavy Cav Archer, but no Thumb Ring, so that's a little awkward. They're also the only Civ that miss Supplies, Gambesons, and Squires. So you miss all three of these Barracks techs. And uh, every Civ except Goths have Arson, and Goths get a better version of Arson, arson for free. So, yeah, every Civ has essentially Arson, and uh, Chimera are the only ones that miss these three techs. Very bad infantry. At least you have help. Koreans are the only Civ with a full university. Every single university tech is available to Koreans. Every other Civ in the game misses at least one. They also have the most expensive unique unit with the turtle ship. I mean, yes, technically Hofnitsa would be more expensive, but that's more of an upgrade to uh, an existing unit. But like, as far as a pure unique unit goes, the turtle ship is the most expensive. And also, technically, the war wagon is the most expensive castle unique unit. You never end up paying this price because you get the 50% wood discount, but it's actually 260 total resources for a war wagon if you're playing all techs. And if you compare it to the war elephant, it's actually only uh, 255 <laughs> resources. So technically, they're more expensive than war elephants. Oh yeah, they're also the only Civ to miss both Blast Furnace and Plate Barding Armor for their cavalry. Lithuanians are the only Civ that have a stat boost for all three main trash units. Your Skirms move faster and can get uh, extra Pierce Armor with Tower Shields. Your Halbs move even faster than Kelt Halbs with Squires, but they miss Blast Furnace and Plate Mail Armor. Uh, that The Pierce Armor missing from Plate Mail Armor is made up for uh, with Tower Shields, but you still don't get that extra melee armor. And Winged Hussars for Lithuanians are just the same or better in every single stat compared to uh, regular Hussars. You don't have Blast Furnace, but the extra attack you have uh, makes up for that. Magyars, again, this is a pretty well-known one, uh, but they're the only Civ to have fully upgraded Arbalests and Paladins. 
a Civ like Huns, you know, they have mostly fully upgraded Cav Archers and Paladins. So yeah, you have two of your most uh, powerful mainline units fully upgraded, but otherwise Magyars are a pretty simple Civ. Malay, this one is of course very well known, but they're the only Civ that have a stable that you can build to miss uh, Chain Barding armor. So obviously their uh, cavalry misses a lot of armor. They also have the best wood to food conversion with their fish traps having 2,145 food on them. Uh, and they also can have the most units in a game with karambits, um, you know, without uh, conversions and stuff. Yeah, you can have a, up to 400 karambits in a standard game of AoE too. If you have no villagers, only karambits. Malians, this one is also pretty well known. They're the only Civ to have a completely open Castle Age tech tree, uh, minus the regional units, of course. But yeah, every single unit and tech is available to Malians, except for Gambesons, but they get a better version of Gambesons for free, so... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to count that count that against them. Mayans are also a pretty straightforward Civ, but they do have the cheapest building in the game, which is their Palisade Walls with the uh, the discount, only two wood, like back in the day. But yeah, that's that's uh, really all I can find with Mayans. Mongols have the fastest working villagers on any resource, of course, with their hunters working 40% faster. Villagers, when gathering from any resource, uh, yeah, no one gathers a resource faster than Mongols uh, gathering from hunted food. Why they have, of course, such a lightning quick start. Persians are the only Civ that have fully upgraded Hussars, Paladin equivalent, and Heavy Camels. No other Civ has all three of these units fully upgraded. Only they don't have Paladins though. Yeah, yeah, I know. Savars, they're Paladin enough for me. Also, they obviously have the highest HP regular unit with the Elite War Elephant. Poles, I really struggled to find one for this Civ, but they are the only Cav Civ that don't have plate barding armor, uh, as obviously you're all about the, uh, the cheap Cavalier spam. Uh, if you can think of something else that's, like, interesting and unique with Poles as far as their tech tree goes, definitely let me know in the comments, but I couldn't really find much here. Portuguese have the broadest discount of any Civ, with all of their units costing minus 20% gold. That applies to, by my count, all but six units in their tech tree. It doesn't apply to the three main trash unit lines. It doesn't apply to fishing ships, transport ships, and, uh, villagers. Literally everything else the Civ can make gets that 20% gold discount. And yes, that does include trade units, trade cogs, and uh, trade carts. Romans are the only Civ that have uh, a completely missing main, you know, ship unit line, so fires, demos, and galleys, uh, that don't have a compensatory uh, unique ship. So Koreans also miss all demos, but they have turtle ships. Vikings miss all of uh, the fire ship line, but they have longboats. Romans just miss demos and have nothing in their place, so you're just without demos completely. It means that on aggressive hybrid maps, if you fall behind early on water, you don't really have a comeback me mechanism. Saracens, this was another Civ I really struggled to find something like completely unique as far as the uh, tech tree and bonus combination goes. That's especially interesting. Uh, their camels in the Castle Age have the most HP of any non-siege na land unit, a uh, non-elephant land unit as well, so... 145 HP camels in Castle Age, super, super strong, but other than that, yeah, I couldn't really find anything. They have a complete archery range, but so do Japanese. Sicilians have a couple, but they're pretty obvious. They are the only Civ in the game that does not even have watchtowers. Of course, they have their donjons instead, and they're also the only Civ that can create their castle unique unit uh, in the Feudal Age uh, with their sergeants. Uh, other than that, I don't really, can't really think of anything too exciting for Sicilians. Slavs, they are the only Civ that have to pay for a building discount. You have Datinets, which you can research in the castle, uh, and it replaces your castle part of your castle's entire stone cost with wood. So it's not even technically a discount, but it's the only building discount you actually have to pay for. There are some unit discounts you have to pay for, like Shastrias for uh, Gujaras, but yeah, that's the only building discount that you have to pay for. Spanish, this one is very well known, but they are still, to this day, the only Civ with fully upgraded trash units with elite skirmishers, halbs, and hussars, uh, boasting full upgrades on all three of those units. Even in 2024, that is still the case. Totters have a few. They are the only Civ in the entire game to miss the chainmail armor upgrade, of course, for their infantry, so their swordsman line is very bad. But you still have halbs with squires, so it's not like the end of the world. They also have the longest ranged unit in the game with the uh, Timurid Siegecraft trebuchets with Siege Engineers. That is 19 range, longer than anything else. And they are also the only Civ that can create a unique, uh, a completely, you know, separate unique unit in the Siege Workshop with the Flaming Camel. That was changed uh, in one of the more recent patches. You do get uh, Hope Needs, of course, for Bohemians, but that's, you know, an upgrade to the Bombard Cannon. It's not a complete unique unit. 
Teutons have the most bonuses of any civilization with six distinct bonuses, although I would personally kind of combine the town center garrison space and the tower garrison space, but still, according to the game, they have six bonuses. Every other Civ has five or fewer. They also have the highest melee anything in the game with the uh, elite Teutonic Knight with full upgrades. It even has more melee armor than a fortified wall by one, and the fortified wall has the most melee armor of any standard building you can get. Castles, for reference, only have uh, eight melee armor by default. And of course, they are the only Civ that have Scout Cavalry, but no Light Cavalry. Turks, this one, I think is pretty well known. Uh, they're the only Civ that miss Elite Skirmisher. Gurjaras miss uh, Pikemen as well as Turks now, so that's not unique anymore. But Turks are still the only Civ to miss Elite Skirmisher in the game. They also have the most gunpowder bonuses with uh, one, two, three... Or wait, one, two, three. Uh, you got a gunpowder unique unit, and you got artillery. So yeah, round four. Vietnamese, this was another one I kind of struggled to find something super unique for, but they are the only Civ in the game, or rather they are the Civ that have the highest HP of a non-unique unit with their battle elephants. You get, uh, you know, 420 HP on those guys with shot trust, which is more than anything um, in the game except for uh, the elite war elephant. Uh, actually, the standard war elephant too, but still, highest HP. And last but not least, we have Vikings who are the only Civ to have this sort of discount. Warships cost 15% in Feudal and Castle Age, but then get another discount in Imperial Age. Vikings are the only Civ to have a discount of any kind that is the same in two ages, and then gets better in another age. Every other um, discount in the game either remains the same throughout, you know, whatever period of the game, like Japanese infantry attack faster starting in Feudal Age, and that's the same throughout the game, or it gets progressively better throughout the game, like um, the uh, Inca food discount, for instance. So yeah, Vikings, kind of weird how that bonus works out, but that's just for balance reasons. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it. Let me know if you thought this was fun. There's kind of a, a fun little video. There are some uh, more weird gimmicky videos I want to make in the future. Let me know in the comments what uh, you guys would be interested to see or interested for me to test. Um, I am, of course, open to all sorts of suggestions. And, of course, I'll be doing more tier lists in the future as well. So thank you guys all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.